What up? It's Rocky Rivera, and you're watching D2S. Ow. I want you to talk about products that you come out with, your discography. How you got started into rapping, you know? How I got started in rapping. Well, it wasn't rap. It was like writing, and then writing turned into poetry, and poetry turned into rap. But it didn't really come out until like college when I was really sure of what I was talking about. But I used to uh, roll with the crew called the Rhapsodistas. We were all very organized, strong P9s in the community, and we just got together. And that kind of grew into something bigger, me wanting a taste of more of like the studio life and actually making an album or a mixtape. So I made a mixtape, Married to the Hustle Mixtape, which is free. Um, and right now we're in the studio working on my debut album, Rocky Rivera, coming soon. <laughs> So, um, I know, you know, you're very opinionated, you know, I know that. <laughs> what kind of shit is that? No, no, no. It's, 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 it's a question. Whoa, he, he's supposed to wait until like the fifth question no, to say that to me. I know how to no, do no, this. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. It's, no it's, comment. No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> he started shit with me again. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying that, um, how does that reflect? In your music and, and what type of things do you like what type of topics do you like to tackle in your music if you could narrow it down well I just talk about situation that, situations that I think the people would relate to me in I mean I just write about stuff that's like a story it's like I approach it like it's a novel basically like it's fiction it's based on a true story but it's not about me. So I take situations where I can identify like, well, basically, I can't go into that without saying that the concept for my album, Rocky Rivera, is like a character, she's a character of a book called uh, The Gangster of Love by Jessica Hagedorn, who is this uh, P9 author. So rather than go into her literal narrative, I just kind of flip the concept, which is gangster of love, you know? It sounds like an oxymoron. It sounds like, how could you be a gangster of love, gangs, you know? Banging is about hate, but really it's not. So I just play with like concepts of struggle and war and love and how the lines are just blurred, you know what I'm saying? So it's a very experimental piece, but it's 100% me, that's for sure. Okay, okay. So, um, damn, I, had a, I had a question. See, I never interviewed a, 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 journalist. a journalist. I'm watching you. I'm, I'm watching you. <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid of you. All right. <laughs> hey, that's some D2S history right there. First time anybody ever shook Halene. Halene has true. interviewed a lot of people. That's not true. Well, one of the first. One of the only. <laughs> one of the you were saying. So, okay, so you being a female rapper, I mean, I, you know, I don't want to really touch on that because, you know, I'm sure you don't, you know. I don't, know how you <laughs> I don't like that. that. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? But fact of the matter is that you know you are a, a huge or you are a minority yeah oh yeah, yeah. I'm a minority is an understatement right. I'm the only one yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a yeah. so how do you like carrying on that role of being a female rapper well it it just sucks that you know you're just like female rapper so like the Inverse of that would be just a rapper, which would be like a male. Inverse, I don't know if that's the right word. You know what I mean. Yeah. But a female rapper, it already provides itself some kind of unusual thing. Like, oh, she's she's a rapper, but she's female, you know? And it's like, people are people. Like, I mean, I grew up listening to a lot of, like, male-centered hip-hop. And I kind of wish that there was more of the stuff that I grew up with. Like... As soon as Lauren bounced, it was just devastating to me. It was devastating to me because she was not just a female rapper. She, oh, she beasted everybody that she got a track on. And, you know, so my point is, is, is that talent is universal, basically. Mm -hmm. You know, like, if you tight, you tight. If you get on a posse cut and rip everybody on there, male or female, you know, that's you. So, so. The whole genderization stuff, I don't really trip off that because a lot of my fans are male and they love my stuff just fine. So, because they're that progressive, 
aggressive type. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> so, I mean, do you, do you mind talking about like personal stuff? Like, like, <laughs> See, you know what I'm saying? Like, just totally. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> You're going to ask me if <laughs> about. Uh, child, about you know what I'm yes. Like, do you mind talking about that? Or, or yeah, of course. Okay. No. So, Ra- mother- mothers can be rappers right, too. So yeah. Mother, you know, so that's, a, that's obviously, uh, you know, an, an added, um, you know, I don't want to say tag, but it's it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's something that's. Uh, a role. It's a role. Yeah. So, how does that play into it? Well. I mean, like, in terms of, like, your content or in terms of, like, your schedule that you have to balance. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's hard for, um, I mean, you could tell that if, like, female MCs, when they go on tour, they have all these things, that they take a lot of time off. And I think that that's because people think that they have more responsibilities as a woman and a, and a father can go on tour for, like, months on end. So it's hard. you got to balance that out. But at the same time, I made my whole mixtape when I was pregnant. The last song I made, Khalil's song, Eight and a Half Months Pregnant. And I used to, you know, partake in the in the greenery and have to write and that would be the only way that I could write and I had to really challenge myself I had to say this is not about my story this is about my like my personal story this is about my stories and it's like um you know it it really grounded me basically I mean before I I might have been doing it for selfish reasons but more so I wanted to put something out there that was positive and something the little girls can listen to something that um, my son could be proud of, you know, and I was, you know, I'm, I was impregnated by a rapper, you know, so <laughs> we had to keep the C going. <laughs> we got to keep the super DNA going. But um, I mean, I don't think that has, I mean, if you're talking about get, going in the studio when my son's asleep and having to do that, being so tired all day, people who want to do stuff, they do stuff regardless. That, that, that's not holding me back in any way. And in fact, it's just making me want to Sun fools, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> no, I look corny. <laughs> literally, literally. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, no, no, no. If you heard Khalil's song, it'll tell you everything about how I felt about that. All the the roles that a that a woman has in society. You know, if you're a female MC, that's almost the opposite. You know, you feel like it's two different things, and I just want people to know that it's like. That's what I do it for, basically. For my son's generation, what's he gonna grow up listening to? The stanky leg. <laughs> do the stanky leg. I ain't hating on stanky leg though. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when you ain't never been in the club, hella drug listening to it though, right? You can't hate on them young kids no more. So, oh. so uh. So you've had a pretty um, illustrious career, you know, with uh, journalism. So why don't you talk about how that started? Where you're at now? Do you want me to repeat the question when I answer you? I'll, I'm making sure, like, it's cool. Oh, for him to hear, you can hear him. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's good. Sorry for interrupting. <laughs> okay, I'll let me. Three, two, okay, one. Can I, can I do the journalism yeah. This time? Like, uh, <laughs> you, guys are, you guys are battling right now. Uh, <laughs> okay, you can ask that again. I'm sorry for interrupting. <laughs> okay, um, so you've had an uh, esteemed career <laughs> as a journalist. So, on, so talk about how you started and where you're at today. Well, I grew up in the Bay Area, so, you know... I was just kind of a rare breed. I liked Mac Dre, and I, you know, I took Pac's side with the whole beef, and I didn't really get into like progressive Talib Kweli stuff until college and stuff. But you know, I love the Bay, and I think that it just happened to be that I love writing. I got to college. I knew from the get that I wanted to be a magazine journalist. And in my last year, um, I saw a Craigslist ad, and I applied for it, and it ended up being Ruckus Magazine, which was founded probably from 04 to 06. And uh, and then within one issue, I became the editor. So that just that was just a whirlwind. It just started because it was just like so fresh and so new. The hyphy movement was popping off, and it was like all this new talent was coming out of the Bay. So that kind of motivated me and then I ended up getting on Rolling Stone a um, 
a documentary series where the winner wins a one-year contract there. It's, it is a whirlwind, definitely. This all happened within at least four or five years. And then journalism, straight up. <laughs> journalism is done. You know, the internet came, bloggers came. Um, a lot of the educated brown folks that had these positions where they were authorities on this culture, this hip-hop culture, this subculture, you know, they got laid off. And, and, and it just became this serious, like, like, I mean, all those magazines folding, you know, Vibe folding, Blender folding. So um, I just started thinking, like, you know, not only is the industry falling off, but the music is falling off a little bit, too. And I'm just tired of pitching stories about where all the female MCs are. You can't pitch about something that's not happening, basically you can't prove a negative so i just said this is gonna allow me the time to sit back and really think about the kind of music that i want to hear out there and for once write about myself not write about some fool who's like gonna call you and say how come i didn't get four mics how come i didn't get four stars no it's your music you know so i got into that but i had always been writing i just knew that there really wasn't a place for me just yet uh until i was ready to say something for real like not trying to get in, you know, as a little homegirl from the crew. Like, no, you know, I need to I need to have a message out there, which is I'm going to be here, so get used to it. And you probably will like it, too, you know. So then I became what I wanted, hopefully, you know, when this comes out. I became what I wanted to hear, which is the other perspective, the woman's perspective. We're not all strippers. We're not all video girls. We're not all Drake's video girls. <laughs> we're not, we're not. Uh, dimes of the month when you know like we're your everyday home girl that listen to hip-hop just like you so um i think that i'm not really doing it oh i'm doing this for the ladies no i'm doing it for me i'm doing it because i love hip-hop i love hip-hop and I, i'm not gonna be done with it just yet at least until i put my mark on it you know so instead of complaining i went and did something about it so Rocky Rivera, coming to a CD store near you. <laughs> Holla. <laughs> you can cut all that shit out. <laughs> That's all I'm doing. I know, well. <laughs> okay. Um, so where we are is uh, Six Finger Studio. And uh, he produced half of the album and also my first single, Marshmallow. Marshmallow, yes, I said marshmallow. Um, and that's my first single, my first video, and it just came out, and it got crazy hits and crazy love, and it's my first video, so I got to really do it up and have fun and um, put all my homegirls in it. So that was fun, and I know how important that is for a new artist to come out, especially considering the industry nowadays is all on the computer. So we did that, and that single's out, and the album is going to come out soon i don't want to be a rapper and be all like yeah it's coming out in uh january it come out in may you know so soon and oh also i gotta give a shout out to my cool video producer <laughs> ariel yes that twin and um he helped out with the video a lot so it was good it was fun oh um mikhail shapiro he directed it he's he's somebody you should look out for and um that's coming out. We're trying to tour. We're trying to do a big homegirl tour coming to a town near you. Make sure you bring your swishers, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah. So, yeah, that's about it. Um, okay. And how can people stay in contact with you? Um, if you want to find out more about what's going on with me, the journalist, the rapper, the mother, the partner, the soldier, gorillabusfair.com, gorilla with you, one R. And um, you could just keep up with me there. Find me on Twitter at Rocky Rivera, and holla at me, and I'll make sure to say what's up. Shout out to all the folks that uh, have been with D2S since the public access days, including myself. Roll the clip. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, straight up, you know, like I got mad love, so you'll be seeing. Cut. <laughs>